Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I've got a video that's by request. The other day when I shared this video, I had a bunch of people say that they wanted to know how I did those letters. They wanted to see that video. So that's what I've got for you here today. Now I'm going to show you how to stencil on the gel prints, but I'm going to show you the speedy ways. So I'm going to show you a couple of tips and tricks to go quickly with it. I'm also going to share with you an ugly one because one of these letters that's on here, I didn't like what that print looked like. Can you guess which one it is? Well, you'll find out when you go through the video which one eh, didn't look that great when I was doing the print, but was exactly what I needed on here. Now I'm gonna use gel prints because that gives me a variety of colors, patterns, that kind of thing. And don't worry if they're gel prints that you're not in love with. This is a great way to use up some of your eh, middle of the road gel prints. This gel print has a really dark blue that I love down here, and I wanna stencil some letters on there. I'm gonna take these from the Alpha Jumble stencil and I'm gonna put them down here, but if I want them to really stand out, I need to do them in a really light color. To make these letters even more fun, I'm gonna give them some dimension, some texture, by using the Mousse by Marabou. What this is, is it's a pastel paste, so it's gonna have a kind of gritty texture to it. I'm using this spatula-like tool to do this, but if you don't have one of these, then you can use something like a hotel key card, an old ho uh, holiday gift card, anything that you've got, that will just basically spread that stuff on there for you. You might be thinking, wow, you've got more stuff on there than you actually need to use for this. Well, yes and no. You can definitely use less, but what happens is, is your letters will be a little bit lower or not as deep. If you use more, you can see how there's a generous amount on there. It's kind of sticking up above the letters on the stencil. That's gonna make the letters a little bit taller when I pull the stencil off. Now, which way is the right way to do it? Well, it's really whatever way you wanna do it. And I'm actually gonna do it both ways because how I clean off the stencil actually gives me the other way. Even with all that I'm using, when I lift off the stencil, I've got nice crisp lines and that light color that really pops against the dark background. Well, let's clean off the stencil and make more letters in the process. So I've got another gel print here. This one's a nice rich orange color. And instead of putting more mousse on here, I don't need any more of it. I'm actually gonna clean what's off on there and that's what's gonna fill in the letters. So these aren't gonna be quite as deep or as, as textured as the first one, but this is how I get it all off of the stencil. Well, I don't mean all, I mean I get most of it off because you see that tray of water that's right there? That's where I wanna put the stencil as soon as I'm finished with it. Because this stuff, I do not want it to dry on my stencil. It is very, very difficult to get off if it dries on there. So that's why I'm gonna put it in the water as soon as I'm done. Right now what I'm doing is just using up every last little bit of that mousse so nothing gets wasted and then there's a lot less stuff to clean off in the water. Now these letters will have a little less dimension or depth to them than the first ones, but they still have a great texture to them thanks to that mousse. Now before I forget, I wanna get that stencil in the water and get that mousse cleaned off of it because I do not want that stuff to dry on my stencil. For this one, I've got a print that I like, but I don't love this one. It has some fun colors on it, but again, not one that I love, so that makes it a great candidate to use with this kind of stencil. This kind of stencil is a masking stencil. So when I roll the paint on, when I lift it up, then you'll be able to see the letters, as opposed to what you just saw on the last stencil, where I was stenciling the actual letters. So with this one, I'm actually stenciling around the letters. Now I could take my time and do this with a cosmetic sponge and pounce up and down, or I can take a roller. If I know I'm gonna do a bunch, I prefer the roller because it's just so much faster. I'm gonna use my hand to hold the stencil in place. And by the way, if you're not comfortable doing that, just use some repositionable tape and tape it down as you're doing this. Then you just roll over with the paint. Now this paint is a heavy body paint, which means it's thick. So that means it's not gonna run underneath it very easily and it's gonna give me some great, quick, crisp lines with this. As I'm using the roller, I'm also using a very small amount of pressure. I'm letting the paint on the roller do the work so that I don't have to push down because pushing down is what will run the paint underneath it and then you won't get crisp lines like this. I could stop here, but there's still space on the page so I'm gonna use this stencil again. It's not gonna fit completely on there, so I'm gonna choose which letters I want to put on there. Meaning things like the A's and the E's, the vowels, those are gonna get used a whole lot more for me than the Y and the Z row and the numbers. 
Of course, now that I say that, watch, I'm going to want to have like 50 Zs for some kind of project. But usually it's the vowels and other letters than the Y and the Z that get used the most. You might be wondering why I'm using a gel plate for my palette here to roll the paint out on. Well, that's because what I found is when I'm using a gel plate, less of the paint gets wasted. In fact, I can make sure that none of that paint on there gets wasted because when I'm all done with this, what I can do is just grab a scrap gel print, one I just want to build some more layers up on, and I can actually print off that paint right on there so it's going to build up layers and not go to waste. When I'm using a roller on a stencil, there are times when I end up with a lot of paint on that stencil. So what I will do with that is I will rinse it off. In this case, I have a tray of water right next to me, so I'm going to toss it in there. Let's talk about cleaning up the other stuff here. Now I mentioned about the gel plate that I'm just going to take a print with the paint that's on there. So I grabbed a scrap paint that I had and I'm just going to let some layers build up on it. And that's going to get most of the paint off of it. Now what about the actual roller? Those rollers can actually hold a considerable amount of paint in them. So that means I like to get as many uses out of them that I can. What I found is if I put them in a plastic bag and make sure that it's nice and tight, say by putting a rubber band around it so that air can't get in there, I can leave them in here for several days without any problem whatsoever. Which means if I want to come and do another one of these tomorrow with the white, I can just grab this roller, take it out of the bag, and add some more paint to it. What about really colorful prints? What can you do with those to make the letters pop? Well, that's when you want to use a really dark color. Now I have a problem here with this one though. So the stencil that I've got, the Vintage Typewriter Alphabet, is a 9 by 12 stencil, but my paper is 8.5 by 11. Is this an insurmountable problem? Is this the Mount Everest of letters to climb? No, not really. It just means that there's probably going to be a row of letters that's not going to be printed. I should say a half row of letters, because you can see it almost fills it, but not quite. Now, I'm not that interested in half letters, and I really don't care so much about the Z and the question mark. What I really want are the other letters, the A's, the E's, the S's, the T's. Those are the ones that get used far more often than Z. So that's why I'm just going to position this on here so that I've got the most important letters. Oh, and gosh, I just had a thought. Poor Z probably thinks I'm picking on it in this video since I keep leaving it off as I'm doing this. But for practical reasons, it's not the most popular letter in the alphabet. It's not the one I'm going to use all the time. So someday I'll have to make it up to Z, but it's not going to happen today. This stencil is a little different from all of the others. Now this one's called open-ended and it's not going to be filled in or closed. These are just going to be a, an outline of each one of the letters and it's not even a complete outline. And what that does is it gives you a boatload of freedom and flexibility for you to change them up. Which means for a project like this, where I want a lot of different letters, this is going to be a very handy stencil. Right now it looks like it's getting a little lost there on all that pattern, but if I take a pen and add a little bit to these numbers or letters, you're going to see how it changes the look. Now ideally, I would wait for everything to completely dry, but I'm not going to use that kind of better judgment. I'm feeling impatient, so I'm just going to dive in here. I'm going to work on the bottom part of the page so that my hand doesn't smear the paint, and all I'm doing is drawing some scratchy lines in there, loosely repeating the number three over and over or the number two over and over to get this scratchy line look in there. But since I've got those guidelines, that's going to make it easy for me to get things that look like letters, even if I don't like my handwriting. And speaking of not liking things, what about if you do this and when you go ahead and you put those letters on there and when you lift it up, you think, eh, it just doesn't do much for you? Well, actually, that's not going to be a problem because we're going to be cutting these up. And once they're cut up, they look completely different. So one that you may not like when you first lift up the stencil may actually be very useful in the end. So let's dive in to cutting these apart. Once they're completely dry, you can use scissors or you can take a shortcut with a paper trimmer. Since I'm going to be doing a whole lot of these, I'm using the paper trimmer. What I'm doing is just cutting the easy cuts with the paper trimmer. So just going along there and I'm not worried about it being exact because each one of these is going to be unique, which means there isn't any pressure to make each and every one of these identical. Once I've got them cut into strips, then it's easy to come in with a pair of scissors and just go chop, chop, chop really quickly down the row to cut the letters apart. 
And of course, at any time, if you want to add more embellishment to the letters, you absolutely can. That's one of the perks of having really wide or thick letters, is you can do things like add touches of white to it. And that's going to give each letter their own personality. That's going to make it look like you've got a whole bunch of different letters, when really they all came from just a few stencils. Now, along with doing things like lines or shapes, you can also journal inside some of the letters. Remember earlier in the video when I was doing scratchy lines inside this stencil? Well, this time, because it's on a solid background, I'm doing some scribble journaling in there. And yep, I am actually thinking real words as I'm writing this. I'm just not writing it so that anybody can read it. And that includes myself. I can't read that either. If you love your handwriting, this is a great chance for you to write things neatly in there that somebody else could read. Since I'm really not a huge fan of my own handwriting, I tend to stick with the scribble journaling. So you get the idea of how this works now. Take a piece of paper, maybe a colorful gel print, and you stencil an alphabet on it. Then you cut it up, add some embellishments if you want to it, but completely optional, so that you end up with a whole bunch of letters with each one being very unique. And once you've got those letters, well, what do you do then? How do you keep them straight and organized? Well, I did a whole lot of these, so many that it was gonna become an absolute soup of letters trying to find stuff. So I'll show you how I organize them so I can easily find a letter that I want. Each letter got its own envelope and then it's in this box or container so that it's upright and it's easy to see what's in there. Oh, and by the way, I cut the flaps off of all the envelopes too to make it easy to reach into there. Now, as I spread these out here, keep in mind that each one of those A's that you see was probably another piece of paper. So like I said, I did a whole lot of these things, but I wanted to create a really nice stash of letters. Since I cut up most of these letters at one time, that meant I had a lot of these to put in. And to make it easier to sort the letters, what I did is in the kitchen, I just spread the entire alphabet out in those envelopes. So A to Z was out there. And then I walked along and put each one on the pile that it belonged with. To make it a little bit easier to do that, as I cut the letters, for the most part, I kept them in alphabetical order. Occasionally there was one I missed here and there, but in general, they were all in order. So that made it a lot easier to get those into the proper envelopes. And I even roped in a few family members to help me out, so that made it go a lot faster too. And now I have a great big assortment of letters, so anytime I want to spell a word, I can find the letters that I need and probably have whatever color I need too. So now you know how you can take your gel prints and your alphabet stencils and create a great big stash of letters so you can build any word you want anytime. Now all of the stencils did come from stencilgirlproducts.com and I'll have a full list of all of them over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. And of course, if you want more fun, check it all out over on the blog, acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.